What is going on, everybody? This is J4Y from Dota On Demand, bringing you yet another Reddit League game. Uh, this is going to be between GS, which stands for God Sent, versus Metalocalypse, uh, which I believe is a show on Cartoon Network, if I'm not mistaken, or Adult Swim. I don't know. I haven't watched it. But anyways, it sounds familiar. Uh, so here we go, going into uh, a best of three series here between these two teams. Um, I'm not exactly sure how either of them are. I haven't had a chance to watch either of them play. So this is all kind of fresh and new to me. But, you know, either way, I'm excited for this to go down here. Um, by the way, I want to also uh, let people in the chat know uh, I've had a little bit of streaming problems today, and if anything happens with lag or delay or anything at all, just give a shout out in the chat. Let me know what's going on, so that way I can quickly try to fix <laughs> whatever problems happening because uh, I didn't have that luxury last time, and it was unfortunate that I was struggling through there, and you guys just couldn't get the quality of cast that I wanted to bring to you. So hopefully we won't have those kind of issues this time. But, you know, it's always a possibility. Um, also, a quick shout-out to Mott. I uh, did a great co-cast with him. He was a lot of fun. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to do some more together. But we'll have to see how that goes. But it's a quick out to him, as well as Law Raptors. There's a whole bunch of casters. Everyone doing a great job so far. And uh, just so, to all my brethren, I salute you. Um, also, of course, the, chin the channel, the Reddit channel that this all started from, uh, slash r slash rdtl for Reddit. Uh, you know, go there, you can check out the schedule of games as well as the casters. <clears throat> so you can kind of, excuse me, you can tune in, see when your favorite teams are playing, your favorite casters are casting, just join in the fun, and make it just a fun weekend for everyone. And I also appreciate you guys coming out here watching this stream when I know there's other exciting games being played around the world. Whew. Apparently I needed that. My throat is already <laughs> having issues. That's not a good thing. Uh, looks like the games, uh, the people are all coming in the game now, which is really good to see. So we can get this game started right around 9 o'clock, which would be really nice to have. Uh, it's always nice when games start in time. Well, start in general. This uh, There's been some issues with teams having people show up or come on time, unfortunately. But uh, either way, uh, it looks like everything's going to be okay. So we're just waiting on a fifth player here from Godsent. <clears throat> Shouldn't be a big deal. Alright, so we'll see what's going on here. Like I said, I haven't seen any of these teams play, so I don't know what their, their kind of strategies are. Uh, like I was telling Mont in my last cast, I really, really hope that uh, at least like, some TA action comes out or anywhere. Is there a huge echo? Is it fixed? Oh, okay, it was his that had it twice. See, I w I've actually now had the uh, the thing open here to make sure that my stream looks fine. Because, like I said, I didn't have the luxury of people in chat letting me know what was going on. So I was just like, now I'm like kind of, I don't know, I guess uh, cautious. And I want to make sure everything is going smoothly for the viewer as well as myself. Because I can't tell when I'm doing this. You know, I'm, uh, I I've got uh, no issues there. But, yeah, as long as everything's okay. Banana, thank you for the code word. A little early, but I appreciate it nonetheless. <laughs> uh, oh, let me throw this uh, stream out there. Oh, can't do it too late. Game already started. But either way, I'll send it to him in stream chat. So everyone can get a little catch of this. There we go. Streams linked to both the captains. So we are underway. <sighs> Gonna see the draft come out and see how quick that goes. Uh, you know, actually recently, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these things are going really quick. These, like, captains just know they've been waiting. They've got it planned out who they're gonna pick, who they're gonna ban. Uh, TA probably not on that priority list. Wisp, I'm surprised still, hasn't made it into picks or bans, at least for the games I've watched. I think... Uh, some other cats have had the luxury of seeing him, but either way, uh, I haven't quite gotten to see that, but still, uh, not, I guess, a huge surprise at the end of the day, as it is kind of still relatively new to the scene, uh, the Wisp Hero, that is. So, two heroes loading in, one more, the Captain Bread coming in, which has a lovely picture of some delicious-looking bread. Makes me kind of want a piece myself, but uh, aside from that, 
uh, about to get right into this draft. Is that a Christmas pudge for Santa Claus? Uh, it's pretty epic, if so. Mad props to that. Bread is connected to the game. Oh, it's executioner. Okay, you had it. It's on your end. Okay, I just wanted to make sure everything was good for my end, because like I said, I, I'm still very, very cautious about all these things. So, thanks for the shout-out, though, just in case. Remake asking. I saw him connect, so I'm not sure that's necessary. Yeah, he's in the game. He's here. So, we're okay. And we're right in the draft here. I'm gonna switch it up. And, uh, yeah. Now going in here. Oh, excuse me for that animation. Okay! So, starting out with, uh, Metalocalypse. Gonna get the first ban as well as pick. Uh, I would expect, of course, the typical ban so far we've seen this tournament. <clears throat> Lycanthrope coming out very early. Nature's Prophet. Uh, you know, Dark Seer, another top one. Chaos Knight, there you go. Uh, getting actually banned out first here. Do not want to deal with him. Uh, very strong hero. Of course, strength adds to that as well. No, you cannot ghost. That is very true. That is the idea of delay, believe it or not. <laughs> Chen actually banned out. Very interesting there. I haven't seen Chen even played in this tournament. A lot of players don't even like to... Uh, to run him, to be honest. Uh, very micro-intensive here, but of course it pays off if you can do it correctly. So, you know, I don't know. I'll have to see. Maybe they, they think Melocalypse has a lot of practice with that, and he very well could. Ten seconds, remaining. Ten seconds now remaining until we get in the bonus time for a second ban for Metalocalypse. Are they going to go with that uh, Lycanthrope? Still not banned yet. Uh, you know, and actually, okay, Invoker makes a lot of sense. Another very common ban as well. And it just has so many different spells in his arsenal. Uh, and can have really great global presence as well with that Sunstrike, if he indeed goes the Exhort. Uh, but of course, a lot. I think Quaswex has been the most popular I've seen in this tournament. Uh, to really get good lane control, as well as CC. Uh, the EMP, of course, really effective. So around great hero. Nature's Prophet now banned out. Once again, no big surprise there. Uh, awesome global presence and good pushing potential, uh, as well as a great jungler. Two junglers, I guess, technically banned out. And here's Lashrak as the third ban from Metalocalypse. So, still seeing that Dark Seal, still seeing that Lycanthrope. And actually, I'm not surprised Metalocalypse is not banning them because they get first pick. So, why would you ban the hero that you probably favor the most? I mean, obviously, you, there would no, be real, no good reason to do that. So now, I'm going to expect uh, Godsend to ban them out at this point to ensure that they don't get that really great jungler, or even laner. I mean, he can do either just well. Um, so, I'm not exactly sure how they're going to do it. Darkseer, they prefer not to fight, so I'm expecting Lycan to be picked up pretty much immediately here if they're comfortable with running him. If not, it's going to give it over to uh, Godsend, and they might be able to use it just as well. So you're going to see they're definitely trying to figure out who they want here first because there's still a few different pretty good heroes left in the pool. Uh, at least uh, high tier picks, I guess I should throw it. So I'm uh, going to have to see what they decide to go here first. Definitely still taking a lot of time to consider this first pick. And there we go, Lycanthrope, indeed the first pick of this game. <laughs> no shock at all. And actually it's the first one I've seen get through the ban phase, so I get my first Lycanthrope for the Red League tournament. Uh, makes me excited for it, at least. Uh, you know, get to see him play it. I, I'm going to assume jungle, like I say, since he's so effective at it, and can get a really quick Vlad's at the case and go just take Roshan out by, like, level 8 almost solo. Uh, definitely a great option. So hopefully we'll see him do something along those lines. They're going to have to make sure to keep him down as best as possible. You know, work to really shut him down in that jungle. Because if he just gets away with free farm and gets that Black King bar and whatnot, he's going to be unstoppable in the mid game. So they have to be cautious of that. Windrunner, a very common hero, is usually run in the solo to get a lot of farm as well as, you know, the levels. Um, it can be played support too if need be. But Tidehunter, there's a great support with Amazing Team Fight. Picked up a lot, actually. Um,. In this tournament, no big surprise. Ravage being one of the best initiators in the game. I mean, the range on it alone makes for uh, a wonderful time. Um, 
Of course, the Gush lowering armor and slowing, and then the Anchor Smash reduced damage 40%. Going to be really nice against Lycanthrope also if he can get that Anchor Smash off to reduce his damage in that team fight substantially. Uh, they'll probably look to do that as quickly as possible. Queen of Pain now picked up, so going for already a pretty high mobile mobility kind of team with the Lycan at the max move speed and the Queen of Pain with blinking around. Uh, really nice lineup so far, and Sand King going to actually be their third pick for this first pick and round. So, bring a lot of team fight there. Those two alone are huge AoE uh, uh, you know, possibilities for these fights. With the Queen of Pain, of course, having both the the, uh, the two the two big AoEs, Queen of Pain and her ultimate, the Sand King with the Epicenter as well as the Burrow Strike to land some stuns out, and they needed that stun because right now they were lacking it up to this point. So now they have at least a reliable stun. It could be a line to hit multiple people, which would be really nice. Um... But yeah, and I, I, I don't know, the Tidehunter though and the Windrunner both have really great CC themselves. And this third hero, I'm not sure who they're going to go with, but uh, they could go for maybe their solo mid here at this point, or even another support, depending on how they want to run this. Depends how they want to match this up. Tidehunter, of course, is also a good roamer in addition to just a babysitter. Uh, you can line ganks up just so very well with that gush. It's a very powerful slow, and like I said, it reduces armor too. So on top of this slow, now you're making them take extra damage. Um, and depending on who they're going to run against that, since they have the Queen of Pain, but she usually is going to go middle. So I'm not sure who they're going to... They might not run like one hero. It might be just two or three. Or they might do a dual lane, excuse me, to try to counter that out. I'm not exactly sure at this point. So we're going to have to see. And this is what I'm talking about, a little curious, the Chen ban. Because like I said, normally Lycan is the one that's banned right away. But they want, they, I guess they're more afraid of a Chen than a Lycanthrope. And we're going to see if that holds true for this game or not. Rubik actually picked out. Wonderful. Great hero, of course. I'm expecting him to actually be run middle here with that Fade Bolt. Just does a ton of damage. Good harass as well as uh, reduces attack damage. So makes it really hard for them to last hit. Very important when you're worrying about that middle lane. Uh, and then the spell steal. He's got already two great spells of steal with the Queen of Pain's ult as well as Sand King's. But then don't forget about Lycan's ult. If he can catch that, he gains it. And he's a ranged hero. So he's max movement speed, critic ranged hero. It's actually pretty hilarious. And I think he has a visual for it now, if I'm not mistaken. They added a lot of Rubik visuals. So that'd be really cool to see one of those running around. Brewmaster and Enigma both banned very quickly. Uh, I definitely appreciate both of those bands, especially, though, the Enigma band. I actually normally see him get picked up in these first six picks, so it's kind of interesting to me that he didn't, in fact, make it there. I guess teams just prefer these other heroes, which makes a lot of sense also. Anti-Mage, of course, another popular ban out, because he would definitely throw a lot into the mix if he was picked up by Godsent. But no, they don't want to deal with it. Instead, they're going to ban him out. So we're going to see who this last final ban is. Um, what what exactly does Melocalypse need is the question. They have a jungler, a middle, and a support. So they obviously need someone to get that farm on the bottom lane, and then possibly a top laner that can survive. So Brewmaster, I guess they didn't want to get the farm in the bottom lane. Now they're trying to consider who else they might not want to see down there. Morphling might be a good ban choice here. Uh, purely because, obviously, he's a super strong hero, picked a lot recently, and just shows how effective he can truly be. Um, so I would definitely kind of expect like a Morphling Band to come out, or even maybe a Faceless Void, perhaps, since so, so they can't like pull out these huge AoE moves for the team fights. Crystal Maiden actually banned out. Interesting. Interesting. I mean, they, they could use another support, uh, I guess, but... I really don't know if they were going to go that, especially because, like I said, this top lane uh, looks like they, like I said, I think they really need someone to get farm on the bottom. Of course, I'm not going to do that. And then I really feel like they need a top laner, unless Lycan's going to be in that lane instead of the jungle, which, of course, is a possibility. <sighs> but not when they go Shadow Shaman. Interesting. Okay, now I'm a little thrown off, and I'm going to have to wait and see this fifth pick before I make any real calls. A quick Vengeful Spirit also picked out, so another wonderful reliable CC, and as well as adds a ton of damage to his team with both the Aura as well as the Wave of Terror to Roost Armor. Uh, great pickup all around. Definitely liking to see that. Uh, fifth and final picks coming out for both teams. Actually, Godsend only have nine seconds left on their bonus time, so they don't have much time to think about it here. 
but they're giving a lot, giving a lot of time here because Metalocalypse has really they're 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 trying to figure out who's going to complete this lineup for them. Uh, I think Shashan was a great pick in the sense that it's going to be a lot of CC. And actually, I think I know how they're going to be run. But I'm going to just wait until if this fifth becomes a, a, a ranged carry, like a Morphling, I think this would be an amazing lineup for them. I think that would really tie everything together and just add a lot of huge damage to their team. As well as if, <laughs> if it could be a shotgun Morphling on that, on top of all this other big burst damage they have, yeah, that would be scary. That would be very scary. So I would actually really like to see that pickup come out. But, you know, at the end of the day, we'll see how, how that plays. So in the meantime here, now they're definitely going in this bonus time, but still got plenty of time, 50 seconds left on the pickup. Still trying to figure out if they really like my idea of Morphling or if they think I'm just messing with them. So, uh, no, th they're not exactly sure. Uh, Temple Assassin, of course, would be my pick here. I mean, or Alchemist, just every day, all day. Just, you know, see those two heroes running rampant. Of course, I'm trolling, but I would love to see it. I'm not going to shoot it down if that's what you guys want to do. First game is for trolling, man. That's what I say. It's a best of three. Let the mistakes happen in the first game. Let, let, let's let let's go crazy a little bit. Just out of the box. Let's see what you guys want to do. Apparently, eat all your bonus time is what you guys want to do. Ten seconds now almost remaining. So they've gone for like this full minute. Venomancer. And Venomancer? Venomancer, fifth pick. Whoa, that throws me for a curve. I guess they really expect Lycan to be all of their uh, auto attack damage, which he absolutely can provide. I mean, no question in my mind there. It's Slardar. Hmm. Slardar. Alright. So, the Slardar pickup obviously is to counter out the Lycanthrope to make sure he goes down and doesn't get too beefy and tanky in those team fights, as well as allowing them to kill the squishier targets, which the other four are pretty squishy. The Queen of Pain, Saint King, Chashaman, as well as Lavino, all pretty easy to kill targets. So when you throw that all together, let me switch this overlay out. When you switch all that together, I mean, definitely no surprise. Restarting, he says, uh, okay, better than remaking. No problem for me. I have no issues with that, no quarrel. So he's going to restart his game. Let me introduce the players, though, in the meantime. We got uh, Jay Dabriel coming out here on the Shadow Shaman. Santa Claus for the Vino. 999 on the Queen of Pain. Martin Reed, the team captain on Lycan. And Kerwin on that Sand King. Over here on the Dire, we have Mamie Scratch on Tidehunter. Flies Killer on <laughs> Slardar. Slippers. On the Vengeful Spirit. Mahjong. Tell me he plays that in his spare time. In the Windrunner. And then no name on Rubik. Actually, that is Bread. And that is going to be their team captain. And so here we go with the lineup. Uh, really nice drawing here coming out from the Slardar. i got to give mad props to that. Um, but yeah, so as far as the lane phase, this Vino throws me for a huge curve. I, I mean, of course, he's a, an agility hero, but not the one I was looking for. I was thinking the Morphling was going to be a better pickup, but uh, now they're just definitely a huge AoE team comp. That's what they've decided to round out with. They have the Vino ult, the Shadow Shaman doing tons of damage in CC, and Queen of Pain, Sand King, of course, known for that. Uh, and then Lycan's going to be following up with these amazing auto attacks in his ult in his beast mode form. So, I mean, you know, definitely a ton of damage coming out from this team, but they're also very vulnerable is the uh, scary part of their lineup. If they get caught out by a great Ravage or uh, possibly some Shackles or a Slardar initiating, I mean, they could be in a lot of trouble. Slardar, a very effective hero at killing the squishier targets, especially with his AoE stun on top of the everything else, the Amplified Damage, of course. Uh, they can do a ton of damage here, but there is no real... Hard, hard carry, except for Lycanthrope in this game. Like, the Dire, the Slardar, he can do a good job of it, especially if he gets an armlet, but he's not going to match up, I feel like, late game, or he shouldn't against the Lycan if they get at least equal farm, but Lycan usually gets even more, just purely if he goes that jungle roll. But speaking of lanings, or how the lanes go, I believe Queen of Pain now might take the long lane instead of that middle I was expecting, and instead I really expect Shadow Shaman to take the solo mid here, leaving Vino and Sand King in the bottom lane and Lycan in the jungle. And I definitely like those lanes. Everything about it seems really effective. Uh, Queen of Pain, of course, can escape very easily uh, with that blink ability. You got all the stuns and the slows coming out. 
Um, but they have a ton of options. They could go either direction. And meanwhile, in the dire here, um, I'm going to expect to see this Rubik middle. The Windrunner, of course, going to go uh, down into this long lane. And then in the top lane, a scary try lane as Executioner calls it in the chat. I mean, just, uh, you know, putting a Slardar on top of a Tidehunter on top of a Vengeful Spirit. That is massive CC. Two stuns in a slow that reduces armor. I mean, I don't know how much more they can ask for. And a Queen of Pain, as a great as she is, is escaping. Uh, that blinks, especially early levels, is not long. It's too long cooldown and very short range. Only 700 compared to 1150 at higher ranks. So she's going to have a lot of issues being anywhere near those creeps. We got some words coming out now. Pain. Is he a three days grace fan or is he in actual pain? I don't know. If he plays under pain, maybe that's the way he prefers. I'm not going to get into it too much though. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. They've got some interesting combos either way. Apparently they are telling us to eat our vegetables. I respect that. You know, it's going to build up your immune system, boost it up. I don't know why I'm going to vegetables. You guys don't need to hear that. So, anyways, uh, waiting uh, for this bread guy to still come out. You know, maybe he's baking a loaf right now. I'm going to pop it out of the oven fresh. Have to see. The only problem I have when pauses like this come out, and I've explained my other games, but first of all, no items been bought. No one's gotten towards any lanes. I'm like, I can only guess. I can only try to guess. So... I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it's going to be, they might go completely different. It's happened to me a lot. I've seen, like, I'm like, oh, Enigma's going to be in their jungle and everything, and then I see him, like, lane, duo lane with someone. I'm like, oh, or he's going to duo lane. I had no idea. Like, <laughs> I mean, it could go so many different directions. Uh, but, yeah, I have no issues with it. Just wait it out with me. We'll see how this goes. Hopefully this pause will end shortly. Hopefully this restart. I don't know what kind of computer he has, but hopefully it's not made out of wood as previous uh, gamers have had their computers made out of in the past. So, checking it out now. I have to call him out on it. I believe it might be made out of wood. Or some dribbles might be involved. I'm not sure either way. <laughs> Ooh, but let's not get into racial things here. Come on, people. Keep it clean. Keep it clean. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I still think their lanes are pretty strong. Pretty strong setups here. Uh, I, I guess as far as uh, advantage goes in team comp, I give it to Radiant. I, I really do. I, I like how everything can synergize together if they can indeed get their uh, spells to work in combination with one another. Huge AoE potentials. And then the Lycanthrope to follow it up and clean up. You know, he'll just mop everything out. Uh, and especially because that BKB will be really easy. Um, doesn't have a lot to worry about once he, he once he achieves that. But like I said, Tyler can really get the, the jump on them with this Ravage. And then throw the Vengeful stun and, uh, you know, some Shackle shots. The Slaughter gets in there and does his great old Slytherin crush. Uh, all around. You know, just uh, good stuff indeed. Uh, you know how there's things called Writer's Block? This is Caster's Block. This is, <laughs> this is probably the definition of Caster's Block. I'm going to try to make sure I have some content to discuss. Bread is indeed playing on a loaf of bread. I think that is more accurate than the wooden PC. Good call by F91. Uh, yeah, I don't know how effective that could be to play on a loaf of bread. Unless Pumpernickel. Pumpernickel, I heard, makes is a great manufacturer of bread. Uh, or at least quality-wise. <sighs> I'm still waiting on this computer. What in tarnation is he doing? Has anyone had any opportunity to level anything or get any items? Holy moly. Nothing at all. So hard to speculate here, and especially because it's game one. I, I really am trying my hardest to think of things to talk about here. If it was game two, I'd be like, yeah, so that fight from game one is really the turning point of what happened, and this is why they were not doing good here and there, and blah, blah, blah. But... <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Oh, they're asking if he's ready. Oh, he does reconnect! Hallelujah! 
Alright, getting into the game! I am so excited. Mahajong apparently finding it funny, but they are all good to go. Here comes the unpause. I love seeing that new unpause thing, and we are ready to go. The troll -o lol is coming out. And here we go. Game 1 starting out for this Red League best of 3 series between Godsent and Metalocalypse. So, underway, and already you see Tide running down here to the bottom lane, rushing here, gonna try to drop those Observer Wards, and this is a very typical thing you see coming out from Dire Sides. Uh, they like to come down here, come around here, usually plant a ward around here in the jungle, uh, and then just kinda hope to get a kill, but Radiants have been probably onto that, especially Lycans who can do this with their Wolves. Uh, great to see here, they scout out with these 400 health Wolves just to check out the surroundings, gonna try to get the ward, or the rune or at least see what it is. I've actually had seen a lot of games where Lycans uh, hide this wolf somewhere, and then right when that spawns, oh, he's actually going to get caught out here. And here they all go. They see the wolf. Here we go. Everyone converging on it. He needs to run away with it, but he's going to give the 21 gold. Huge advantage to the Dire. No, I'm just kidding. But actually, oh, here we go with the counter warding. Speaking of which, interesting. So they're going to shut down the, the easy neutral spawn, uh, as well as just give vision, which is not only to give vision to the surrounding area, but also to prevent this from spawning. So, uh, a couple great wards placed very early on. You know, I guess they were expecting, and this is maybe why they let Lycan go through to the picks, because they are, like, they knew how they were going to try to counter him out, and this is a decent way to do it. Uh, he's going to probably be just waiting around here, uh, looking to jungle the early camp and then realize, hey, it's not spawning. Oh, you silly billies. I see what you did there. tri is actually nice. It's going to get run in the bottom against this Shadow Shaman, so I was completely wrong. Shadow Shaman going to take this. Vino is going to take the top against the Rubik. So he's... <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen in that lane. Uh, but either way, Shadow Shaman's going to play amazingly defensively. He's going to be with the Sand King, but still, this trade lane, we've been over how aggressive and deadly it's going to possibly be. Uh, and here comes Lycan now. Going to get spot out by the ward, actually. Looking, and hey, guess what? No spawns there either. All he's got is some really big spawns. In. Is he going to come to the tri lane? Don't tell me he is. That would be... That would be very bizarre. He is here. He is here! He is not jungling. He doesn't want to mess with it now. And I don't agree with that at all. I feel like he still needs to try to jungle at least a little bit. He can take some of these creeps. But no, he's insistent on trying to get farm. And that's going to actually be amazing for the Dire here now. Because the Lycan is only really scary when he gets that really good farm. In fact, what I kind of want to see is that he could just easily go and be aggressive in their jungle. But no, he really wants to try this out for a little bit. So... Uh, already looking nice, at least for get Godsent in that regard. Don't have to worry about a super farm Lycan right off the bat. And this tri lane, and Lycan doesn't do anything in a tri lane. He only is going to get less experience and not nearly as much farm. You know, maybe they're going to try to push, but obviously until Shadow Shaman is 6, they don't have anything for pushing. They really don't. So, not exactly sure about that. Um, Windrunner actually took the middle lane, which is pretty off the path there. Rubik, you normally do see that. And actually, here we go. Lycan is porting. Going to even get spotted out here. But I would have to expect him eventually to switch over to this jungle and just take and creeps because you don't want to run two people in this lane against Rubik. There's no real point to it. You know, this is really not worth it. A TP comes out here now, Vino. So yeah, Lycan, they're just not interested in running him jungle at all. They're actually going to try lane versus try lane. So, yeah, not interesting jungling, just wants him to get some solo experience and levels. He's going to go one-on-one -on -one against Rubik and have, I would think, very minimal problems there uh, against Rubik. He should be just fine. Use those wolves for good harassment and last hitting as well. Sand King going to have to be kind of careful here. Uh, it is only 2 versus 3 right now, as you see Shadow Shaman actually going to counter ward himself. So good stuff, so that way they can keep pulling the lane, and that's going to be there for a while. They don't have any sentries themselves, at least not yet. Uh, but they ping it out, so they're aware where it was dropped. Um, but in the meantime, yeah, I, I mean, as far as tri lanes go, they both have a ton of CC and damage, so it could go either way. It really depends on who gets the jump. But there's two strength heroes here with the Tide as well as the Slardar, so able to do a ton of damage if that's the case. Um, 
I would I would think the Dyer would have the advantage then with how much stun they have, but they also have a lot of stun training. Like I say, it could go either way. Not exactly sure. We'll have to see how the initiations go and how it plays out. Like it, they're probably going for that quick ring of Basilius into eventually the Vladimir's offering. A very typical build, as you see on him, to get the life steal and the damage aura. Queen of Pain taking a ton of damage. Shackle not going to latch, though. The Blink could come out to at least uh, juke out one attack. Not going to hit him. But yeah, in a ton of trouble and doesn't have a healing self, has to buy one from the store, and she already has a bottle. And she's gonna get a Rejuv rune on top of that. In addition to that, maybe even a four minute rune now. Although it'd be kind of a waste of the Rejuve. But still, not bad either way. Actually, Rubik annihilating these wolves with his Fade Bolt. So kind of interesting in that. Uh He's being a little aggressive with them, perhaps, and that's just feeding Rubik gold as well as experience, so he can't be doing that. Actually, initiation bottom here, sinking, missing with his stun, just trying to survive, but Shadow Shaman's in a lot of trouble. I know he's going to be just fine, though. Sandstorm used as well as the Venom's Gale. Actually, he's getting a little turned around on. Venomance has to be kind of careful. Slaughter is very tanky and very mean, and he has that AoE stun that he has to worry about, but Tide does not have the mana. He's going to pop off a of Clarity now to start getting some of that back. But that was an interesting turnaround here. Uh, they need some more healing styles in this bottom lane. Shadow Shaman just way too hurt. He's going to use it here on his ally. Very courteous and friendly of him to do so. But yeah, I mean, it was going back and forth either way. You saw a ton of damage coming out from both sides. So very nice uh, job there. Invis actually going to be used on top of the Rejuve. Windrunner already at level 6, by the way. So off to a fantastic start. Windrunner is kind of in a little bit of trouble. Needs to start getting some items sent her way. Needs a bottle pretty desperately. The power shot goes and lands, but it's not enough. Actually, initiation here. Venom scale as well as the shackle coming out, but now Shadow Shop is in a heap of trouble. Gonna try to do as much as he can. Uses that to shock, but gonna get first blood. And back to the Ventral Spirit, who is taking a ton of damage. Is gonna drop! Actually, yeah, to the creeps, and now, here we go, the Venomance are trying to get yet another kill. Oh, just barely not going to, though, on the Slaughter. A nice attempt there, but the creeps are just proving to get in the way. So, it's going to be a one-for-one -one trade, but the first blood, very important for the Ventral, who does, in fact, die right after. And, you know, either way, though, a good setup here. And, like I said, they have a very, very powerful uh, initiation chance there, uh, with those stuns coming around in general. <laughs> Shout out to Grimmise Pants as well for uh, organizing this whole thing. Give me a little message there on the side. Uh, you know, props to him for putting this together, making a lot of people getting together for these events. It's a lot of fun in general for us. But back to the game here. Uh, let's take a look. I haven't yet at the gold score. Okay, it's going in favor of Dyer now. It's pretty even you know, up to that two minute mark. But now about 2,000 gold in favor of Dyer. His first blood as well as the farm just definitely in their favor. Uh, I believe Lycanthrope is going to be 11 and 0 compared to a 26 and 3 Rubik, so yeah, definitely not having as good a time. Queen of Pain, I believe, 7 and 2 to a 34 and 9. Mahjong has been playing that game way too long, getting expert at swapping tiles for creeps. I don't know where I'm trying to make that work, but as Shackle comes out actually the Rubik. They're trying to harass him down, but Lycanthrope, I mean, he's not. He has his six actually, but doesn't have mana now to even use it. So, Shashar maybe just going to hang around here to try to keep setting up kills on this Rubik, who has Arcane Boots and a couple of Tangos. Uh, but they're going to look to maybe do more harass with these wolves. Here we go. A Shackle comes out, but the wolves are just not going to be enough damage, unfortunately. It's going to be close, though. Telkinesis is actually going to land. Oh, but they're just the wolves, are they going to have the auto attacks? Here we go. One more. Oh, just barely survives with 30 health. And that's going to be not enough. Unfortunate that Lycan didn't have enough mana for that ulti. Or that would have been easily a kill for them. But they're going to stay two up here, and I think it's going to give them a nice push advantage here. And Vino and Sankin can kind of hold their own pretty well against these three. It's double melee here, and if Vino just keeps his range... Oh, but speaking of which, here we go with the Gush. Going to be a stun, followed by a crush. Sankin needs to land some stun. The Vino alt lands. Oh no, the stun only lands one person for Sankin. The Crush is now going to be up in a second. The Anchor Smash going to miss. Slither Crush might land, though. Actually, he's definitely going to land after that. Here comes the CC, though. Can they keep the CC? A great shackle. Is it going to be long enough for the Slardar to fall? Yes, just barely. Tide now taking a lot of damage. Slardar does fall. It's going to be split between the three heroes. But uh, they're still going to survive. So it's a two-for-one trade. Dyer's still... Actually, yeah, it's still coming out on top, just barely. But uh, overall, great job setting up those stun after stun after slow. Uh, all in all, pretty good.
Baby Bolt's coming around these Arcane Boots, being very effective for the Rubik, and keeps spamming out the spells. He's just really antsy for Lycanthrop to use his ult. I'm sure he cannot wait to steal that at least once this game. <laughs> Neither would I. That's a fantastic spell to have on any hero, regardless if you're an auto attacker or not. It makes you one. I'll put it that way. You become an auto attacker. Actually, I don't mind this Vino Charlie no more I think about it. Got that Ring of Aquila really quick. So gonna have great mana regen for his team, as well as that uh, nice armor. Try to survive longer these fights. And like I said, they have good CC between the three of them. So, you know, not a bad choice, all in all. I guess I was just really shocked to not see Lycan in the jungle, but he's definitely a good laner. It's not like... And that's what I'm saying. I haven't seen him a lot in this league. In fact, not at all. He's been banned. So, at the end of the day, you know, this is the first time I've really seen him in the league picked up, and this is, I guess, how this team uh, wants to run. Metalocalypse, that is. Um, and proving to be decent at it. Getting some decent creep score, at least. Queen of Pain still struggling immensely. Uh, pulling creeps all the way back, just not getting the last hit she needs. And this tower's already at 259 health, and speaking of some trouble, Shao Shao getting shackled and power shot, taking a heap of damage, gonna fall to the Windrunner. So a good rotation down, c catching him out when the wards are despawning. A perfect time to set up a gank. It does get that kill on the really weak Shadow Shaman, uh, who's still only 5. Only oh, 3 points in shackles? I don't know if I agree with that. Against uh, all these stuns coming out, the shackle, the, the crush, you know, the magic missile, just a ton of CC, the telekinesis even. So kind of interesting choice there. I uh, like him now actually maxing out Feral Impulse before wolves. You don't see that very typical, but then again, usually you see him in the jungle where the wolves are his most important feature. Uh, but I think in the lane it'd be really nice to have him too, just so they can be invis, and they can really set harassment. Speaking of harassment, Sand King now takes some damage from the gush. Magic Missile was gonna try to fly, but not going to. Venomous Gale only gonna hit the one hero. The ward's coming out to do some harassment, but not just quite enough. Actually, an interesting choice in these spells. Two points in wards, and two points also in toxicity. The fortification comes out uh, they don't want these towers taking more damage, but both top and middle are just getting annihilated here, and the heroes in those lanes cannot stop this push. She's going to try here maybe to set something up, but just afraid of the power shot, and I don't blame her at all. But actually, we go with the shackle. Oh no, Shadow Shaman's in a lot of trouble, going to fall almost instantly. Gets the ether shock off at least. He really wants to drop this ult, but he's so far off in mana. Could he get the kill? No, here we go with the magic wand. They're going to now use the sprint. Like it comes out with the ultimate, though. And going to at least get one hill. Windrunner, though, going to fish off Venomance in the meantime. Can these wolves at max speed keep up with the slaughter? Yes, they're going to get the kill. But in the meantime, he's still taking a long time to set up some more kills. Going to try going this Windrunner now. No, going to realize that Vengeful might be a better choice. But now he's though he's slowed down. His ultimate wears off, and he's going to fall for it with the amplified damage. Windrunner gets a triple kill. This is going to put her way in lead, 2,600 gold in 11 minutes with the phase boots, with the bottle. Way out of lead, Mahjong doing a terrific job. And in the meantime, Rubik takes the top tower. Middle also fell. So this gold definitely going way in the favor here of the Dire. I'm going to check out the gold graph now. 7,500, are you kidding me, at 11 and a half minutes. 4,000 experience. I mean, they're just, they're they're playing amazingly well here. Great rotations from Windrunner, knowing exactly when to come in. I appreciate the Lycanthrope teleporting in to set up as much as he could there, but he just took so long to kill the Slaughter, who went all the way back into here. And, you know, by the time he came out with that Amplified Damage, his ult was already wearing off. And by that point, he was uh, in the middle of three heroes in a lot of trouble. You know, once that ult's down, Lycan does not have a lot to bring to the table. It's really all about that burst of speed and damage. So they need to really keep him up on farm. He is not doing nearly as well. Only has a ring of Basilius and a Quelling Blade and Boots. I mean, he's just not getting nearly the farm he needs at this point. A Steel comes out now. It's going to be a level 3 Blink to possibly set up a Telekinesis as well as a Fade Bolt. If they can get a shackle with that, easily can set up a kill now. Actually, a headdress bought with 2200 gold remaining could actually, I believe, finish the mech at this point with that much gold. Slaughter in the meantime, gonna use kill a Venomancer, and he drops his ult, but against these three heroes, is not a level one ult is not gonna do nearly enough damage. So, you know, kinda try to do as much as he can, but a solo a solo Vino against these three is way too scary. So uh, definitely a great choice. Actually, Sand King now, Telekinesis, here comes the shackle. Gonna latch really far back, but gonna get the kill still. So great setup there, waiting with the patience to just set up a kill. Shadow Shaman trying to come in now to set something up, but just not in time. And they're going to get away scot-free. 
Meanwhile, Lyca just farming up here, trying, like I said, trying to come back a little bit. Is he still going to go for the Vladimir's is the question. Uh, maybe not be a terrible choice, but he does need that BKB, obviously, is another high priority on his list. So he might go a d different couple directions, we'll have to see which he prefers. TP coming out now, Rubik. Gonna look to come back top, has a buckler. Actually, the Hedris, I guess, is going for a pipe then. Because you see uh, the components for the mech on the Rubik, so two mechs would not make much sense at all. Uh, so you would think Pipe is actually going to come out winner. Another great choice against all this magic damage from these three heroes in this bottom lane alone, as well as the Sand King. Just definitely a great pickup, all in all. Maybe looking to set something up, Trilane versus Trilane. Although I don't know who's really strong at this point. Actually, they're half health. And Tyner are going to get caught out here. Here we go. Is the Venom's Gale going to land is the question. They haven't lined it up yet. Ravage only just hitting the Queen of Pain, but she's going to drop instantly, which is huge for the outcome of this fight. The Swap coming out to stop the Shackle. Venomator has already dropped the Gale, but has no other spells available. The wards came out, but it's just not enough. And now here we go. Venomans are in a little bit of trouble. Here we go with the Amplify. He's pinging. Come back to my wards, and they might give you a savior. Yes, the sprint comes out. Winner in the meantime, getting a maybe kill on Lycanthrope. Actually getting baited out by the Crush. Going to get the kill. Sinking double damage. Looking to help out, but just not in time. And this is just very unfortunate here from Bellocalypse. Just getting annihilated all across the map. Oof. Really good setup there. They were trying to pay out the words. They're like, hey, dude, fight here, man. This is where the power is. But he was just trying to bait him in and got caught out the crush. Plus the sprint. I mean, he's a fast guy. You have to keep that in mind. And now a tier 2 tower getting pressured out. Uh, this is destructive duo running around. Just actually getting the mech delivered here. As well as, is the pipe going to be finished? Yes, he already has a pipe. 15, mech and pipe at 15 minutes on their team. I mean, this is just looking terrible. Paul's coming out from Kerwin on the Sand King. Apparently, they're not having good times with Skype, so that would definitely cause some issues in the long haul. So, yeah, I mean, the advantages are just going 10,000 gold now coming out in favor of Godsent. And, I mean, you know, 7,500 experience as well. Just big, big advantage all around. And no one here on the Radiant just can get anything going. Their creep scores are pretty low. You know, with Lycanthrope about 40 at the highest, you see 84 on, on the Windrunner. You see 64 on the Rubik. Even 42 on the Slaughter. I mean, there's all around getting kind of bullied in all these lanes. Uh, no real harassment on any of these towers. They've done a total of maybe 400 damage, 300 or 400 damage to all the towers in general is not very good compared to already losing two tier one towers themselves you know just all these factors are really contributing to them having this awful start and i mean they have this great aoe comp but when you saw in the last fight just for example queen of pain got stunned and stunned and by that time she was already dead if she can't drop any spells in a fight then she's brought nothing to the table regardless of how potentially dangerous she is if she can't use anything what's the point you know, so definitely have to be a lot more uh, cautious in those fights, setting these things up. I thought they were going to catch the tide with the Venomous Gale, but didn't use it, and just got instantly turned around on. Man, Locklips looks like they're ready. Apparently, they are both ready. Pun pause is going to come out. We're going to see now. The TP finally going to resolve. Phoebe Mitzer was in that, uh, the, the, the Twilight Zone other times. Here goes the Blink, Telekinesis, and the Shackle. Everything getting used on this like stuff. A great ulti, though, from both Vita Mitzer and Queen of Pain. Going to hit all the heroes. Here we go with a ton of damage. Slardar going to try to survive. A great mech comes out, as well as a swap. But actually, he didn't want to get so it looks like he was trying to stay in there. Windrunner bursts down the Queen of Pain. Is Slardar even going to fall for this? Epicenter now even coming out. But they can't finish anyone off because of all these items they have already. And now it's getting turned around. Ventral Spirit kills the Shadow Shaman. Sinking on the run, but is going to easily get caught out here. A Shackle lands beautifully. Telekinesis, and he's going to fall. Triple kill again. We've seen this deja vu. And, oh, Another great fight here, coming out from Godsend. Five for none. They tried to kill Slardar. They even landed these ultis on a few different heroes, but just not at nearly enough damage. Not even close. And just really unfortunate for them. You know, now they're getting turned around on. And, uh, you know, trying to pressure this tier 2, not going to be able to. But just once again, it was a five for nothing, like I said. So the experience of gold is going that much farther 
down the slope. Uh, now the experience is definitely caught to the gold, 12,000 each. Uh, just really scary seeing this all around. Uh, the item-wise, all around, uh, it does look like Lycanthrope is indeed going to go for that Vladimir's. Uh, try to get that with you as the Morbid Mask, of course. But just all around, you, you see these other items, nothing else really coming out for the Radiant. And meanwhile, the Dire, uh, you know, has so many. Vanguard treads, we have a mech, we have a pipe. Uh, even the support has some arcane boots. I mean, they're all donning some really nice gear. So it's going pretty well in general here. TP coming out now middle from the Windrunner. Uh, also now has a staff of wizardry, so probably going that four staff, I would imagine, to help kite the Lycanthrope as well as just help anyone really escape or initiate. It can go both ways. Use that on the tide to push him in to the middle of the battle. Say, hey man, here, do your thing. Here you go. Uh, you know, it's it's almost like giving him a blink tag. It's pretty nice. But, you know, so good pick up on Windrunner, just as a general rule. <laughs> Could go Yules, though, also. If he gets that, uh, and uses on a Yule on uh, the Lycanthrope right away, it's definitely not going to be a nuisance in any fight. You know, just CCs him for at least a few seconds of his ultimate, and, you know, since his ulti lasts 18 seconds, it's going to cut out about a fourth of it. Now they're going on the Roshan. With Amplify damage and Wave of Terror and the damage aura, shouldn't be terribly difficult. But Slardar doesn't have any damage items. He's really only got uh, this Vanguard to tank it. But here we go with the Amplify. Minus 11 armor coming out now for their team. Just trying to do as much as they can. Gush, on top of that, I just realized how much of a minus armor team this truly is between these three heroes alone. Just great stacking of it. Rubik just chilling out, making sure nothing's going on too bad. Doesn't want to get involved, doesn't want to get his hands dirty. You know, just sitting from afar like a like a czar or something like, yes, do as I command. Kill this Roshan. He's going to TP now to the bottom lane. He does get slain. You see Slardar getting the Aegis. And now looking at everyone to slide on here down, trying to set maybe something up on the Sand King and Lycanthrope, and would be able to do it pretty easily if they so decided to. Just unfortunate. Once again, these creep scores. Like, you see 100 creep score now for the Windrunner, as well as 75 on the Rubik, and the highest one Lycanthrope at 51, and it's again, I mean, he's just not able, they're just not able to get this farm they so desperately need here, and they're just getting bullied around, and it's because of this item, this advantage they've built up. You know, if they engage in a team fight, they can't win it. There's a pipe and a mech on the other team. They're not even close to either of those items. And they're actually looking now to initiate here on the Radiant, no sprints being used on the slaughter yet. They're just scouting about, and they're kind of in the middle. They're going to catch the Shadow Shaman. Power Shock goes out. The wards at least are going to go down, but they're not fighting on top of them. So more or less worthless. The Queen Pain all pretty much whiffing completely. Shadow Shock coming out. She's the ult on pretty much just her, so Rubik on a killing spree. Now Lycan getting kited around. In the meantime, Sand King going to drop. Tidehunter might as well to the wards. Yes, they are, but in the meantime, Lycanthrope now on the run, getting chased down. It's a three-for-one trade just at this moment, and his ultimate is just, it has worn out. He needs a TP immediately. No, he's going to get called out. He's going to try to run, but there's nowhere to run. This tier one tower is not going to protect you. Here comes the crush, and now they apply damage. The shackle even lands. Tons of damage coming out. Lycanthrope going to fall, and that's also going to be the fall of tier one tower. So it's going to be four heroes for one and a tier one. Just gold on top of gold on top of gold here for the Dire team. And it makes sense. This is being, this is just snowballing out of control for them. Uh, the, the, the Radiant just doesn't have a shot here with how far behind they are. And actually, they might get another catch on the Sand King. He has to use the Burr Strike just to keep himself alive at this point. And who can they focus down here? They're all relatively tanky. Even Ventral has a thousand health. I mean, they all have a ton to work with here, and with a mech and pipe, it's just going to make it next to impossible to kill almost anyone. AoE comp or not. Here we got the Shackle going to latch on to two different separate heroes. Amplified damage now going to be probably enough. Telekinesis, yes, going to ensure the Shadow Shaman falls. And now they're looking to do even more damage. Maybe to the Queen of Pain. Power Shot comes out. Not going to do too much. But a Tier 2 now also falling in favor of Godsend. They only have two Tier towers left. All these Tier 1s still standing, in fact, for them. Just gonna check out these graphs again. Oh, I hate to do it because look, it's about 18,000 gold and almost 20,000 experience now in favor of the gods. And you see a blink dagger gonna come out. I believe that was on 
Slider, yes, he does in fact get it in his stash. So now, <laughs> you thought they had good initiation in these last fights? Yeah, just wait till you see this. <laughs> Blinking in Zlardar with Sprint. Uh, gonna have no issues getting anything going for them. Four Staff also finished up here on the Windrunner. So with the phase boost, could be just that much more mobile. Can Kite Lycan with a Breeze, you know, very easily. Uh, as well as help that Titan Hunter get in there in the action. Things are just looking up, up, up. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to call it, I never call the game over, but you, you have to feel for this Radiant team. They're just, they're just not able to get anything going here. It's still no points in the Hex to get a second kind of interruption or anything. Uh, you know, overall, just, uh, I would hope by now you'd have at least one point in there to kind of mix it up to help them, you know, kind of CC just that much more. But just not interested in that, not this point, I guess. So here we go. Let's see if the Dire can set something up here on this Lycanthrope, actually. He's going to be in the middle, but here goes the Blink. I don't think he's expecting it. No, they're not going to go. Lycan even drops his ulti. He's a little scared, and it shows. And now that ulti is going to be wasted, and he's not going to have it for the next fight. And they know that. They saw it used because of the Amplified Damage. In fact, he's just going to jungle. In fact, he's going to get caught here now. Absolutely. Is he forgetting he has Amplified Damage on him? He's very Seed. Very Seed. Crush comes out with the blink, and he's going to get bursted down. So unfortunate that he maybe just forgot that that kid's vision. I'm not sure what was going through his brain there. But at the end of the day, he's going to drop. Now they're going to easily take this tier 2. Plague Wards are not. And they're, they're going to knock this down. Lycanthrope dead for another 25 seconds on top of this. Actually, a defensive ward coming out from Serpent. But now he's going to get a spell steal. Just going to be a level 3 screamer pain. Not exactly what he's looking for. Epicenter comes out, but the pipe's already popped. And here we go with the crush hitting two heroes. Going to kill both of them. Veto drops is up, but the pipes are going to protect him from most of that too. And they're going to get another couple kills. This tower will most likely fall now. And there's four dead with just Queen of Pain remaining. Just beautiful initiations coming out here from Godsend all around. And, you know, they're trying their hardest here on the Radiant to, to pull up a defense, but they just can't. They just really can't. Windrunner are actually getting a blink now just to add on to all of that mobility they have, as well as setting up these great fights. Could be another blink for them. Two blinks on their team, as well as a swap. I mean, just gonna just think they're looking really great all around for the Dire here. Of course, 28 and 5 being the kill score. I mean, you have to figure that. Another tier 2 tower falling. All the tier 1 and 2s are gone for Metalocalypse here. Just looking very grim for this game 1. 24 minutes in. I can't believe it's only 24. And they built up this huge 20,000 gold and 25,000 experience lead. And actually, here we go. Some more initiation. The spell signal is out. It's going to be that Ether Shock. So at least you can do some more AoE damage in these fights with the Fade Bolt on top of that. Uh, Lycan does have his ulti, but only has the lads. So very squishy, very vulnerable, especially with the Amplified Damage. You see two of them used on separate heroes. An 800 health Queen of Pain and an 800 health Shattered Shaman. That's so easy to burst down for anyone. You know, they have to be so cautious at this point. They're going to try, but the Amplified Damage gives the perfect vision up the hill, and they have a couple blinks. He's almost sorely tempted just to come in here, and he has the Aegis. So what is he really fearing? Not a lot. You know, at a moment's notice, I think he's ready to go. Telekinesis is actually already used on Shadow Shaman. Ward's going to be dropped at least, but a Shackle's going to land. Ensure his death. Queen of Pain barely surviving, but going to follow the Windrunner now. Here we go the Lycan getting annihilated, even in his alt form. Mega Kill comes out for the Rubik. And he got his own set of wards. A great spell steal by Rubik. And now Sand King actually going to fall to Tidehunter. Vito the only one to survive. And, you know, he's trying his best with these wards. But it's a ward-on-ward -ward battle that Rubik's appear to be winning out. And they're going to take a tier 3 and a lane. This might become GG. For, uh, for God's sake, game 1 going to fall to them for sure. And, you know, what what uh, Metalocalypse really needs to do is review. See what did not work. And what actually was stomping them. This tri lane, of course, did a great job. As well as Lycan being in the lane instead. I mean, they were confused as to who sent where. There's a lot of TPs going around. And while the lanes seemed to match up towards the end, you know, they just weren't able to pull it together. And they were getting out-farmed massively. The Windrunner was dominating middle against Queen of Pain. Just absolutely dominating it. Getting way more last hits and denies. Uh, you know, was harassing well with a power shot. Just doing a fantastic job in that lane. Rubik also having a good time of it. Ilm Lycan kind of held his own up there. It just still wasn't enough. 
bottom lane got pretty much destroyed by how much setup they had with their two stuns and slow, as well as all the minus armor. I mean, these three heroes, I, I do love to see that combo now that I think about the Gush, the Vengeful Spirit Wave of Terror, and Damage Aura, and then Slaughter with the Amplify Damage. Just boom, boom, boom. And what is this delicious item coming out for Vengeful? Is, it, is that another TP? Really? Oh, no, he, he wants a medallion. Why not? Stack another minus six armor on top of everything else. Go for it. I, I mean, at this point, I, I thought like a Scotty eventual would have made more sense, but who cares? Do as you will. Uh, you know, and this is why. This is why you can do whatever you darn well please. You know, y you could try to throw the game here, but I don't think it's possible. Uh, gotten at least one lane down. This, this tier three is at half health. You know, there's too much pressure. They can't even get anywhere close to outside their base, but they're still choosing to play it out. At least I give them, I give them props and respect. You know, deciding to go for it, not gonna give in here. But you know, here comes another blink. Gonna get the stud. Here comes a blink. Tidehunter also has one now. Just annihilates the Shadow Shaman, and you know, there's little. He was barely pushed out of his base. It's just running up these stairs. The best they can do. This is their only ward they can really go for here. You know, they can't go that much farther out. They have about this much space to work with. And even that's pushing it, because like you saw, he was right here and got killed. So they can't go anywhere else about maybe a sixth of the map, and that's about it. And most of that's just their fountain. <laughs> so not looking good at all for them, you know. I, I don't blame for playing it out, but I would at this point would be like, let's just move on. This is a best of three after all. You know, let's just get to game two, maybe change up how we're going to go about our lanes, and make sure we win our lanes at least, or set up some good ganks to ensure we do a little better than this in the in the early stages into the late. And actually, as my first uh, viewing of Lycan, I'm, <laughs> I wasn't too impressed. And then again, of course, he did get out lane pretty severely, and he wasn't able to jungle, which is what I was expecting him to do. But, you know, he still just wasn't a dominant force. That's why I guess, you know, Hudson was perfectly okay with them picking him. You know, they had no issues with that. They're like, we know exactly our strategy against it, and it worked immensely well. A great shackle now, but we're not a little caught out with these shackles. A swap comes out, Queen of Pain dropping it all, could annihilate Vengeful Spirit. Vito dropping his ult in the middle of them, but a pipe should come out any second. It's actually already been used. Uh, godlike streak on Windrunner. Here comes the rest of the team. A ton of AoE damage count. Mech gonna be popped. Epicenter gonna at least get the kill on Slardar. Lyca needs to be on the run, though. He's gonna get out just barely. Queen of Pain doing as much as she can, but she has to amplify. Thank God the Shackle does not, in fact, latch there. The Ward's doing a good amount of damage. They actually hold off the push. Two for two trade. I believe a buyback might have happened. But, uh... Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what happened either way. It looks like Slaughter's Aegis actually were out right before that fight started. So that definitely has a lot to do with it, I believe. Because if that was up, that would have been easily in the favor of the Dire. He would have respawned, just went in there head first with that amplify damage and just annihilated the rest of the team. But at least they put up a solid defense. You know, they like I said, this AoE comp can be effective if they line these things up. But still, at the end of the day, they're just struggling to even get that done. You know, and this amplify damage is tearing them apart with all the other minus armor. Actually, Tidehunter, yeah, I was going to say, let's see a pause. He gets disconnected from the game. Going to have to rejoin here before this uh, game comes to an end. So what I don't think worked here for the Radiant. Um, like I said, I think their issues uh, kind of started with the laning phase. How they were confused, who was going where. They, they didn't predict it right. They probably expected the trial lane to be in the top. Which is why they sent um, that Vita Bastard just to kind of hold down the fort. While they were going to allow their Shao Shaman to get like absolute free farm with the Sand King. And Light Game is just going to troll around down there. And I think he was planning on jungling. But after viewing a couple different spawns get warded out very early. And they had no way to counter it for a while. He decided to start taking farm in this lane. And then realized that was not going to work. So then finally TP top. And just had to switch it up with the Vino. But at that point, they were already pretty behind. And Windrunner, like I said, was just dominating middle. Like, they have to do a better job, at least one-on-ones in the lane, if they're going to have a chance. Because you can't let a Windrunner get that far ahead, as well as how fast she was ganking and how effectively she was ganking. You know, she came down, got a couple of different kills. She got a triple kill, as well as a solo kill, pretty early in the piece, which gave her a gold advantage that much further. 
apparently a stand-in is in the chat and they don't want him to play. <laughs> uh, you know, with how they're playing, I don't blame them. They're playing marvelously. This is like a ravage coming out <laughs> from the tide owner. Was that a mistake or is he just trolling around? I don't even care at this point. <laughs> These teams are like, what are you thinking? Uh, and I caught that on camera, buddy. Nice try. You thought you might just get away with it, but I saw it. Actually pushing in the middle now. A little surprised. Not terribly. I mean, this tower is at half health. The last time they tried, you had to call them out. I think it was a mistake. But he's like, no, oh, man, I'm just, I'm doing it on purpose. Just messing. We don't need that. Don't need it, man. <laughs> Plague Ward's coming out here. Try to defend it. Are they going to push with the Windrunner? She's not the best for that. I mean, she has Focus Fire, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, I don't know if that's going to work out in the favor. At least Queen of Pain now has a level 2 ulti, but the amp damage already on Lycanthrope, so he's going to be in a lot of trouble. They also gets Vision uphill. You see the Fade Bolt bouncing around, doing some good damage. Ping's coming out. They want to initiate. Slaughter's like, I'm ready to go in, but they're just choosing not to quite yet. A 4 staff also on Rubik now, as well as an ulti, but 3,400 gold. Dare I even look at this chart? 30-some thousand gold and experience lead. Oh, this is killer. This is killer. Level 9 Sand King, man. Do you look out there and see a double your level Windrunner? What do you think? And actually a crush and wave terror and fly damage. They're just going all out on this poor Sand King. And he might even survive. No, he's not going to, but they at least get some spells down. But not before a couple die. Rubik now using the own ulti on the other teammates. Double kill. GG finally comes out. It looks like Slaughter is going to use his Aegis on this wards. Maybe not even. Good game. First game. Going, of course, to this lovely team, God sent over here. Just played exceptionally well by all three different lanes. They're going to wait five minutes in between rounds, so don't go anywhere, guys. Uh, but yeah, well played in general. I love this strategy worked just marvelously. All the reduced armor and CC they are throwing out in these fights worked just wonders for them. And I'm not saying the I mean, they had great CC themselves. These four heroes have uh, some slow and stuns each. And Lycanthrope could carry, but he just didn't get farmed. That's the main issue. If you're going to have a Lycan, he needs farm. He needs to get those big items. He needs a Vladimir's and a BKB pretty quick. Because if he didn't get those, like you saw, he couldn't do anything at all in these fights. And actually, now more CC coming out. It's just to mess around for the rest of this. Uh, going to just take out these towers, though. It's going to end up dropping. So like I said, game one, going to God sent. But don't go anywhere, it's the best of threes. I actually will be restarting the stream. Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to go back to the lobby and then restart the stream uh, for the second game. Ravage coming out. Uh, going to get a good shackle shot. Telekinesis. Poor Vita bats are going to fall. Shadow Shaman just needs to hold back and let these sad days end. Going to shackle. Oh no, gets four staff out. Going to get bursted down. Oh, he's going to survive. Well, yeah, there we go. Game one dropping. Finally. And there we are. So, well played. Gonna head out to the lobby again. Was the stream quality good, guys? I hope so, because I wasn't seeing anything in chat, and I don't want to be messing around again. <laughs> I don't want to have these issues again. So, please let me know if anything's going on with the game. Game already coming up very quick. Two different games. Oh, that's Kawa. That's that's the other caster. Yay, Kawa. Maybe gonna host a game. All right. Oop. Can't even host that one. It's done. Okay. Oh, good. I think I'm hearing quality is right. Oh, apparently I have to. Whoops. I don't see you. Ah, so now we're waiting for the lobby to come up. Uh, thanks again for joining me. This is j for y from Dota On Demand, bringing you a game from best of three from the Reddit League uh, between Godsent and Metalocalypse. First game went to Godsent. Congratulations to them, playing an excellent game. Uh, definitely in their favor for the majority of it. Uh, now we're looking to do the game two. Uh, going to see uh, if, strats, if things certain here's are banned. I'm expecting some to do that. Uh, as well as gonna have to just see all around how this is gonna work. Oh, I see a little shout out to Lala. 
Raptors and Bills Carrot in my chat. Thanks for joining me, guys, as well as everyone else. I appreciate you tuning in. Apparently, uh, five minute five minute break. You say? So I mean, as far as that game went, there was there was a lot of mistakes. I kind of already covered what the Radiant did poorly and need to fix. But as far as what Dyer did correctly, I think that the aggressive tri lane. Uh, especially sending that long lane, uh, as obviously it threw them off right off the bat. It didn't. Uh, Malakos was just not prepared for it. You know, they they weren't exactly sure how to handle that. They were sending people different ways, as well as the wording. I can't stress how important that was against the Lycanthrope uh, to really, really shut him down. You know, they stopped those neutral spawns almost immediately. And, uh, you know, he wasn't able to get the easy experience in gold right off the bat. So he was in a lot of trouble. And he tried to go and get the, the, the farm from different lanes. It, it wasn't able to. <sighs> okay, stream is good. Glad to hear it. Yeah, Twitch, I think, is messing up bills. I, I don't know. It might be. I think it might also been on my end sometimes. I, I never honestly know <laughs> either way. And that's why I like to ask people to make sure it's continuing. And that's why I was actually trying to watch my own for a while. Because when I was streaming with Mott earlier, apparently it was messing up a lot. And I was not aware because I wasn't watching myself. So I, I'm just trying to keep on top of that now. Uh, but anyways... I'm trying to actually look at my viewer list to get this going. I might just pop out the chat. So now, you know what I really... I mean, I, I, I hate to say this, but what I'd really like to see uh, come out here for this game... I want to see a Templar, a Wisp, or a Luda. Please, just someone! Throw me a boat here! That's all I ask. I don't think it's too much. I think at least Wisp could be an easy pickup for any lineup. But... I mean, at the end of the day, I don't know. It's going to be what it's going to be. These teams are probably just too practiced with these other heroes and are, like, not going to throw the game just for my liking. I don't blame them. But those, those heroes are just entertaining. You know, you just want to watch a hero like that. So, you can't blame me for wanting. <laughs> uh... Might be. So, alright, we're just in the lobby. Like I said, it's a few minute break. So bear with me. I'll put in maybe just some tunes in the meantime until we get this game rolling. <sighs> so who you guys want to see in this game? You saw that one. You saw the picks and bands. Who do you guys want to throw in here? Who would be your ideal pick for either of these teams? Who is... Maybe not your favorite, but who you want to see used, I guess, that you maybe not, don't normally see or that kind of thing. What, what do you guys think? I already said Templar Assassin, probably my number one here. I love that hero in general. Uh, but I don't think, I just don't think these people have had enough experience or enough time to get the experience. Unless they play Dota 1. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, should I call it Dota Vanilla or Dota 1? I always don't know. I don't, it feels awkward calling it Dota 1, to be honest. I don't know. I think I feel like vanilla sounds better. It sounds more delicious, like a nice treat you come back to after a while. <laughs> Either way, though. Well played series. So let's look. At, I'm gonna try and look at the schedule coming in. It appears the next games that are gonna happen. Well, there's a 10 o'clock game actually starting up here for Kawa. So after my stream, go ahead and check his out. Uh, he's the Jang Buttholes versus the Ventrilo Bros. Beautiful names all around. Uh, uh, and then Sunday, 8 a.m. EST, you could join me for the, the early game with the Triple V versus Chu. I'm going to be casting out for European if it indeed happens. It might not, but stick around, it might anyways. 2 o'clock, you'll see Lala Raptors coming out. And uh, Bill's Carrot going to be casting Professional Throws versus Posers. In fact, let me pull this up. So you guys can maybe see this a little better. I'm not sure if you can see it like I can. But, uh, yeah, and then we go in here to Sunday, 8 p.m. Uh, I'm going to be casting the Bavis 5 versus the Kingsguard. I did the, the Bavis 5 previously. Great team. Really exciting best of three, so hopefully it'll be another one. Camo versus, uh, I guess it's Tit, but I believe it's something in trees. I don't remember what that first T is, so Tit's just easier to say. I don't mind saying it. 
uh, 9 o'clock. Also, Regiment of Shadows, Bursic Ball Nerders, that's uh, Mott, uh, as you've seen in my previous cast, my, one of my co-casters at the time, but also a great guy. Uh, and then 10 o'clock, you'll see PDT vs. Party Naked, that is truly Grim Bias Pants team. Let's see if they can pull out a win in this, uh, <laughs> in this game. Law Raptors will be casting out Bill's Carrot again. Monday, 1 a.m., I believe, actually, they just Bill's Carrot and Law Raptors to sign themselves up to cast that. Uh, 7 p.m., going to be Mott with his Eliminators vs. Wolfpack. Exo Gaming vs. Oh, it's a Crab at 9. Uh, ooh, I don't know how this is going to work out. I see two Law Raptors games in a row here. And that's an hour difference. I don't think that's going to happen. Might have to find some switching of, uh, of casters. Maybe Mott's going to hook them up. We'll see. Sets vs. Team on the Find at 10, as well as Meow Sports Revenge Squad. I casted the Meow Sports uh, just last weekend. Or no, was it their third game? Either way, it was really recently. They played a wonderful job. They really did. I mean, really strong team. I haven't seen this event squad, though, so looking forward to maybe that. Tuesday, I believe we'll be casting BCCC. BCCC versus Autumn. The season, <laughs> I've been joking around them. I did do their third game. It was really exciting. I was glad to have the opportunity. And actually, my co-caster from before, BDLM, should be back from his hiatus this weekend to help me cast that. And then Thursday, 11 o'clock, apparently a game going to go down. I can't, unfortunately, cast that, but maybe Lol and Bills or someone else will step up to the plate there and hook them up. So did I get some responses about my question earlier? I keep forgetting the chat is delayed because of my delay. So I'm going to have to uh, check this out now. So let me open up this chat and see what people's opinions are. Need more clinks. Clockwork. Couple different ones. Also, Law Raptor shouting out. They have seen Disruptor. I've seen him actually too, but he didn't have a great game, unfortunately, in the one we casted, but still an interesting, interesting hero. A Shadow Demon Lashrak combo. Oh, yeah, you see, you say Shadow Demon Kunkka? If you anyone watched the Star Series today, uh, Meow, uh, God, I say Meow Sports. <laughs> Mouth Sports. Uh, Sing Sing was going on that Kunkka in combination with the Shadow Demon, and it was an amazing, amazing duo. Uh, you know, obviously Disruption, you can land that Torrent so easily, and just slow him and do a ton of damage, then throw up the Tidebringer and the Soul Catcher, just huge damage. Uh, so Kunkka Soul Demon is amazing, amazing lane. Clockwork, I, I do actually like that hero a lot, uh, Aegis, I, I really do. You know, he's an interesting one, great harass all around. As well as initiation, I think that's his most important feature. He can just come in across the map uh, and lay down, of course, all his cogs to wall up and keep everyone in trouble. So an interesting hero indeed. Clinks, I mean, I think I think after I know what's called out because one of the games I casted, we saw a completely dominant Clinks. He just was destroying everyone. He was actually in a tri lane, which I don't see very often. But yeah, I mean. Clinks is another really useful here, especially for pushing at this point. Apparently, Alchemist and Jakiro mid. <laughs> okay, Rabbit Duck. I mean, uh, perhaps. I, I, I keep asking captains, which I haven't actually done. I'll have to let them know. Expecting Alk mid this game. I usually do tell the captains ahead of time. I apologize for not doing this. Normally, one of these days, like I keep saying, I'm going to convince them to go Alchemist mid. But yet to have yet to see it. Uh, Jakiro Alchemist, I'm not sure how I feel about that combo. Jakiro's a good support. Don't get me wrong. I, I like his abilities. Um, the ice wall, ice path, of course, great CC. Stop the bias. Apparently, they are not going to run Alchemist mid for me. How unfortunate. Carry Abaddon, Mom, Agus, a little bit. Aw, snap. We will play Iolina and Lanaya. Yes! Choose all three for me. How wonderful. Oh. Mad, mad appreciation coming out for Godset. <laughs> With clock support <laughs> from top lane. They just want to fit everything in for us. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's, let's see it happen. Yeah, Lol Raptors talking about that Clinks, how he can farm and do some dominant, dominant damage. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It just does a, t a crazy amount. You know, able to really be a destructive force. Uh, can get some amazing farm. 
and some big burst damage. Uh, and able to push, the Searing Arrows does affect buildings. So when he pops Strafe and gets that on attack on, it's just, it's it's really annihilating. You know, they can't leave him alone to, uh, to split push, because that's what he does amazingly well, as well as ganking. You know, if he can be untouched in the fight and just al allowed to fire off his arrows, yeah, they got to be incredibly cautious. So, so far, apparently, we're going to have a godsend running Io, Luna, Lanaya, and Clockwork. And maybe Alchemist mid. Maybe they're fifth, although they say he sucks. I don't, I don't know if I truly believe that. I don't know if I'm a firm believer. <laughs> Waiting for the two heroes coming up from the Whoops. They're sorting out their voice chat problem that they were having in the last game. Which is indeed a problem. If you can't communicate, you're going to have a bad time. We'll put it that way. Game two. I wonder how it's gonna go this time. If at least, like I said, if at least one of those heroes is picked, my night is made. They've already made me happy. They've already made me happy for just playing. Uh, too many no shows and things that may be a little hardened for this this uh, league. But you know, we we are persistent casters. We don't give up at the slightest whim. You know, we keep coming back for more. And when the teams actually play, it's just terrific. We get to have our time casting and just joining in these games. It's just exciting to watch in general. Uh, you know, I'm a, a big esports fan, especially in Dota 2, so uh, just glad to have the opportunity to be here. <sighs> Is Mott, in fact, streaming? It's 9 o'clock. Uh, he actually might be now. Oh, no, I think that game was canceled, actually. I think it was supposed to be played. It didn't end up happening, unfortunately. So I believe it's just Kawa also casting, but I'm not 100% here. So still waiting for the voice problem. Hopefully they get this situated very quickly so we can go into a nice game too. Yes, the people have joined. I'm going to turn off the music because I believe it's going to start up soon. Bear with me, folks. I am going to restart the stream. Going to restart stream. Alright, I've given my warning. Ready it up. 